Today I'm going to bring you a little bit of the history of cannabis and basically what we're going to discuss cannabis on a broader scale. We're going to talk about it from a broad perspective and where it actually came from or where it possibly came from. According to the History Channel and their History Magazine and just general history, cannabis is believed to come from out of central China and it migrated from central China through the Silk, Silk Road, which was a trade route throughout China, and it made itself also throughout China through nomadic tribes in China. But bargaining, trading, nomadic tribes is how it actually got moved around from China to the coastal cities, where it probably met up with Aryan populations, which are European people that traveled the world. But there's also a flip side to this because it also has been found in Egyptian culture. So that means on the African continent, there was a cannabis presence and it predated, it predated the B.C. era just like in Asia, it predated the B.C. era. But uh, there's more documentation regarding cannabis in Asia because... Both societies, put it like this, we'll say, both societies can, can be considered to be cultivists. And whereas, you know, the people that live, the Egyptians that live them on the Nile, they cultivate it off the Nile. As well as in Chinese culture, you could say that they were the chief cultivators, but they were able to document a lot more about it. So we know that as far as Egyptian culture, Cannabis was presence. It was presence in the tombs. They found old stashes of cannabis from old pharaohs back in those days. But we don't have as much information about the cultivation history of the Egyptians, or at least I'm not knowing of a lot of it. But it leads me to believe that in China, they might have studied the plant a little more significantly in that country because it's part of their medicinal journal. It's part of their herbal journals. And the Chinese have also documented a lot of their cultivation. And you could say they're kind of like parents of a cultivate of worldwide cultivation. And they've documented, and there's a lot of things that haven't been documented. So there's gray areas. But if we're going I'm gonna say that because it, it seems as though the Asian cultures have studied herbs have studied plants, have documented stuff regarding plants and cultivation of plants, we'll say that it probably did come from out of that area. And if it didn't, that's cool. That's something for everybody to take into account for themselves as to where the plant may come from because somebody else may have a different history, a more extensive history of Egyptian culture and can say that it came back further than it did in the Asian culture. But we'll just roll with the fact that Cannabis came out of Asia through the Silk Road on trade routes through nomadic tribes, Asian folks, and it moved down to the coastal cities in Japan and Korea. But we'll say when it got down to the coastal side of China, we probably came into more traders that were seafaring like the Aryan traders, which are basically a European people. So the European people came along and in trade, you know, what is this wonder, you know, seed, plant, or whatever, because they were basically picking up stuff to trade around the world. And they ended up taking it from China to other parts of the world. When they, when they actually invaded in India, Europe invaded in India, they brought the plant to India. So the plant has a migration to it, that makes sense coming out of China. But those weren't the only seafaring people in the world at that point in time and even prior to that because let's just say, in fact, if we subscribe to the theory that it came out of Africa and Egypt was one of those places that it came from, there are Moorish travelers who were seafaring people who were all over the world as well. So you can look at it from two different perspectives potato, potato, however you want to look at it. It's about what you, what you feel about the plan. And what I actually feel about the plan is 
like everything else on this earth, it's a God given. You know, and there's a way to use it. We've been using it for years. It's been all over the, you know, the planet in different places. It thrives in different places. So it's meant to be in different places. It's just that the plant has a different response depending on the places that you're in. But um, we'll just, we'll roll with the, you know, the Asian... Asian theory of where can cannabis came from. And it's well supported, you know, by the History Channel. They have a documentary, which I'll put a link to. They put out a magazine. And this is where I drew some of this information from so that I can familiarize you with a little bit of the history of cannabis and where it came from. So in Asian culture, being that they've long documented their cultivating tips as well as their medicinal uses of plants, I would say they have more of a grasp on it, but it also has a nutritional value. So we did discuss that coming out of Central Asia, nomadic tribes spread it throughout Asia, as well as it went down the Silk Road as a trade, as something you could trade for. The seeds are, are very nutritious. The crop, you can produce fiber, paper. There's so many multiple tasks that you can use cannabis, hemp, its stalk, to create ropes and a lot of these usages were used back in those days and by both societies like your papyrus was usually made out of hemp your holy clothing was made out of hemp um, which is mentioned in Egyptian societies and it was probably the same thing in Asian societies hemp was part of it but they used it they used it more than just as a textile a fiber so now that we talked about the plants' migration throughout Central Asia to the coastal cities, to the islands of Japan, Korea, and moving out from there with Aryan cultures moving the plant around. You know, Aryan cultures represent Europe. Europe is another place that the, the plant is found and, it, and has been studied. Wow, I'm tongue-tied this morning. I don't know what's really going on with this. But... Going from Asia, we know that the Aryan people, this Aryan seafaring people that were trading and actually brought it back to Europe, also as conquerors took it into India. And as the plant's migration ended up moving around from country to country, the characteristics of the plants, the adaptability of the plants are better shown because now the plant has different characteristics based on where it's located in the world, and that's pretty much determined by how far away you are from the equator, which is going to determine what type of plants are going to grow, and what we'll say what type of phenotypes of the plant is going to actually grow. So when you got into India, this was a warmer climate, so now you had a more resinous type plant that was coming up, and the more resinous plant is the more psychotropic plant. So we learned that in warmer climates that it, you know, migrated from being this type of plant, which was probably less psychotropic, to a more psychotropic type of plant. And people started to notice more cultural changes as it came to, when I say cultural changes, I mean societal effects of the plant, because now you're looking at the plant from a different aspect. When initially introduced, one of the things that um, we'll say the father of Buddhism um, embraced about the plant was the nutritional value. Whether it be fact or mythology, it was stated that he left his palace to go meditate. And he meditated for six years and his diet was one hemp seed or one cannabis seed per day. I'm leaning more that this is more of myth mythology kicking in, but out of mythology there's some truth, and I believe that the great nutritional value of the seed itself is what they were actually speaking to in that myth, or whether it be true or not, they're speaking to the nutritional value of that particular seed, that it's a seed of sustenance that can be used nutritionally. And that may be an over-exaggeration of what it is, but that's what they were trying to bring across. 
but also in the same country in India, you have Hindu believers and you have a deity called Shiva. And Shiva is the Lord of Bong. So as we've talked about the migratory uh, relationship with cannabis and how it moved from Asia with the Aryan people, the European folks, and then um, they ended up bringing it into India. One of the things that we initially noticed is that um, it's starting to have a cultural effect in the places that it's going. So we talked about it in India and it becoming part of the dogma of um, Buddhism and Hinduism. But uh, it did also have some profound effects when on the European continent. And uh, we best see that in that um, the names that we deal with cannabis today came from the European content, uh, cannabis itself, uh, the three different types of cannabis plants, let's start from here, uh, were noted throughout Europe by John Baptiste, who was a famous naturalist. And there's also a Swedish guy, his name is Carlos Lamanis. <laughs> Uh, I'm not good at pronouncing names, but you, I'll put his name there so you'll know what it is and you can look him up. But he's a Swedish guy and he's a botanist and he studied cannabis and he came up with the term uh, cannabis indica. So I'm giving you a different perspective on cannabis and its history. We discuss coming from China, going into India, being in Europe. But more importantly, we talked about some of the angles and some of the societal effects that we're starting to see in cannabis. Uh, we saw that in Europe, it was studied enough that people came up with the modern day terms that we reference cannabis with today. Um, we haven't gone into it, but in Europe, the cannabis plant was definitely part of the Renaissance movement, which indicated there was a new way of thinking uh, there was new dogma and ideology applied to culture. It's, it's like a, a shift in society, and cannabis played a role into that. But at the risk of making this like super boring and super long and all of this stuff, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to get a little bit of information out to you at a time, and maybe at a later point we'll, <clears throat> we'll come back to some of these things. But just to get a general idea, you know, plot some points around the world so that when we narrow down and get to the United States, you can see from a more broader perspective where the plant was coming from, that it had medicinal value, that it was an industrial plant that you can use for textiles and so many different things. But I'm going to sign off today at this point, and we're going to dig back into it, and we're probably going to dig back into it coming into the United States and talk about its history in the United States, its perceptions, its cultural and societal effects. Thank you for joining me on the Highlights Podcast. This is Mike Spivey. I need you to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. I need you to like it if you're feeling what I'm doing here, which is going to get a little bit deeper and it's going to get a lot more fun. I want you to share it just in case you know somebody who needs to know this information. And subscribe if you really feeling like it's something that's going to work for you. It's going to give you a different insight. Uh, I hope an unbiased insight, but it may be biased to some degree because in this realm, in this platform, it's, it's about how I'm bringing it to you. But I'm trying to bring it to you in a way where you can make your own decisions. You can do your own research and go down different pathways. Just like I alluded to the fact that Egyptian societies had cannabis involved in it. I'm not versed at that side of it. And there may be an Egyptologist out there who's versed at it and can give us concrete information. I welcome that. Please add it. Throw links to it. You know, share that information. Make me go and revisit that and, and look at it from another perspective again. We constantly evolve and change, and that's what this is about. One love and peace from your cannabis culturalist, Mike Spivey. Highlights. Marijuana flower, nigga, you can shout with me. Honey, when I'm sour, nigga, you can shout with me. The letter with no G.